Hey everybody, James Jacob with Tactical Response, and I'm here with John Willis again. And I wanted John to kind of tell me the, the, the history of belts. And uh, so we got to talking, and I thought this would make a great YouTube video. So, start talking. Um, early days, 25 years or so ago, uh, Rigger's belt was the big thing. Um, rigger belt started, um, riggers were making them, you know, parachute riggers and, and guys rigging up. Um, you know, someone stuff were making these belts. And what they started as, it was a, a 7 8 strap, which was a, a big 30 plus foot strap that had a uh, quick fit adapter on the end for, for tying cargo down on the pallets for moving them in aircraft and stuff like that. Guys would take those those belts, you know, Vietnam era, cut them down five, six feet, and use them as a belt. Um, fast forward, guys were taking those same buckles and actually making belts, dual layered belts and stuff out of them. We've made them for, I don't know, 26 so years now. Um, everybody makes them the, the rigger belt. And this is a, a quick fit adapter, which is the actual piece of hardware that's on the adjustment straps for the legs and shoulders of a parachute pack tray for, for skydive stuff. And um, that's where that came from. Um, we, put a, we put a V ring on there uh, for emergency repel type stuff. Um, you know, hot, clipping in helicopters, just emergency um, securing yourself into something or onto something. Um, from there. Go ahead, keep talking. I'm the, just going to do a close the, up. Uh, Early 2000s, there's a company called Astra Alpin, uh, made a buckle called the Cobra Buckle. Um, prior, early days, it wasn't even called a Cobra Buckle yet, and we were making uh, we were making belts, which we basically called our Cobra Rigger Belt. It was the exact same as the Rigger Belt we were making. It just now had a machined aluminum piece that you could quick release, like a fast text buckle, and this is rated at like 3,700 pounds or so. I saw the first one of these configuration of belts from SOE in the early 2000s. I can't remember what year it was. No, it was it, yeah, it was, it was I, 2000, 2001. But yeah, it was it was very uh, early on, and it and it was not nearly the buckle that it is now. It was, it was rather rough looking. Um, it, it was still cool. It just they they've refined it quite a bit. So that's our our uh, Cobra riggers belt. And those are those are 1.75 belts. They're made of Type 7A webbing. Uh, or type 7R webbing which is resin reinforced. These are one and three quarters and for, for years these were the these were the standard for, for carrying a gun or a subload or a drop leg holster or just a gun on the body. This is this is what there was and for, for decades um, these were the stiffest belts out there. Fast forward to about five years ago though um, we came out with a oh, shit I don't have it here. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> um, Astra Alpin started doing a buckle that was a little smaller, just an inch and a half, and we were able to get some webbing spec, and we have inch and a half dive belt webbing. And what this is, is it's the same as the two inch dive belt webbing that guys were putting lead weights on uh, for scuba diving to, to neutralize their weight for um, buoyancy in the water with their wetsuits and stuff. But we were able to get it in an inch and a half, and then utilize this 1.5 Cobra buckle and uh, it's, it's way stiffer. It's, it's a heavy resin content. It's a totally different weave, totally different um, thread that they're weaving this out of. And they're shoving way more threads in there to make it a super tight, um, stiff weave. And this is, is the stiffest you can get. We can take a plastic liner and put inside these things and it doesn't make it any stiffer than the webbing that we're already using. Um, early on we were putting a liner into some of these in, inside of Cordura to make it so we could have a, a cool camo appearance to them. And uh, about every four, five, six months, that webbing, with that, that plastic in there was getting brittle and it would snap. It didn't affect the use of the belt at all, but guys would want to warranty it. And we had no way to warranty them short of giving them a new belt. So we, we totally abandoned that method of building belts and had this webbing specced out. And now we've, we've got this inch and a half uh, dive belt webbing. And this is the stiffest belt we make. It's the stiffest belt out there. And uh, it's, it's still the same, same type of deal. It's a one inch, one and a half inch Cobra belt. Um, it's not life support rated, so it's not available with a V-ring like the actual Cobra Rigger belt is, but it, it's, it's definitely stiff. Um, but same type of deal. From there, we had guys, we went into our EDC belt, which is the same inch and a half webbing, but with a one inch buckle on it. Guys, guys wanted those so they could put them through belt loops. Um, to me, it's, it's a pain in the ass to pass this through a belt loop anyways, so I still take the male end of the buckle off, clip it in, put the belt on, takes about 30 seconds. Um, we brush our teeth for three minutes at a time, so, so who cares? 
that it, it takes 30 seconds to put that, that belt on. Um, now this the EDC belt, it overlaps in the front, whereas the 1.5 Cobra just meets in the front and clips in. So with this overlap here, what it does is it, it's just a, it's a more forgiving belt. You get more adjustment out of this belt. Um, it works just the same as the inch and a half belt does. Um, it's a little bulkier in the front by two layers of webbing, but not enough that you notice that these are the belts that I wear every day and have for, for years. Um, and then we have another uh, feature that we get asked about a lot is the inch and a half uh, Velcro liner on the inside of the belt. You can get a belt with or without that on any belt we make. That inch and a half Velcro is to mate with the belt loops on our pouches that Velcro around and lock into place. And it mates up with the opposing Velcro to keep those pouches from sliding side to side. It indexes them and keeps them in place. Typical rule of thumb is if a guy has to ask what the Velcro liner is for, you don't need it. If you're not wearing um, nylon mag pouches from, from SOE or, or any company, really, it's, that, that method's been out there for about 25, 30 years now since guys have been using nylon to make tactical gear with. Um, if you're only running leather or plastic holsters and mag pouches, you have no use for this Velcro liner. Um, it doesn't get in the way if it's there. It, it doesn't really do much in the way other, other than that. So whether to have it or not have it, 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 there's not really a hindrance to it either way if you're not using it. Um, and then from there, we went to our EDC low profile belt, which uses a G-hook on the front. It functions exactly like the EDC belt does. It just doesn't have that badass Cobra buckle on the front. It's got a price points, I don't know, $20 less because of the cost of the actual Cobra buckle. Um, but function is the same. A lot of guys say that if they appendix carry, uh, they prefer this belt because it doesn't have the bulk in the front of that buckle and it'll let you put that, that holster wherever you want it indexed in there. Um, and then the, the EDC Low Profile has these little slots here so you can actually get a little more adjustment out of these as well. But um, that, that's the, the mainstay of the belts we make. We also make a two inch heavy um, duty belt, which is your, your typical outer belt goes over. You'd use keepers or a, a inner liner belt to mate with that for putting heavy gear on. So make this make this clear. On the EDC belt, the guys are like complaining because they can't get this buckle through there. You just take it off. You just pull, pull, the, pull the Velcro, pull this, this buckle off. It takes just a second. Run the belt through and then put it back on. Um, when you're ready and I prefer like when you have this buckle off just clip that damn thing into the other side right there that way it's not lost in the sheets or your dog doesn't pick it up or you don't kick it under the bed or whatever you're not you're not looking for it just clip that thing in there I take this piece of webbing right here and I, I fold it I hold it all right here with my thumb and I feed it through my pants just like I would any belt then I end clip that buckle and I put that buckle back on and clip the belt together the, the deal is, you know, it takes about 30 seconds. The first time you do it, it might take a minute or two. You just get the dexterity and get the, the idea of how to do it. But I put a belt on every morning. It literally takes 30 seconds, 45 seconds if I'm standing there bullshitting or something. Um, we've timed it. We, we, we didn't do it in a hurry. We just timed it to see. That's how I know it's 30 to 45 seconds. And the reality is we brush our teeth for three minutes at a time. So who gives a fuck if it takes 30 seconds to put the belt on? You've got a belt on. You're not going to take it back off the rest of the day. You're going to be able to open this every time you take your pants down and go to the bathroom or whatever and click that thing back. Plus that buckle is just awesome. Like I got tons and tons of cool shit sitting on my desk. But when I get on the phone to talk to somebody, I'm always messing with that Cobra buckle. It's just, it's just an awesome piece. I mean, to, it, it's just badass. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, anything else about SOE belts? Um, lifetime warranty you'll never use. Um, order them to the size of your pants. Literally, if you wear 32 inch pants, if the tag in your jeans says 32, order a 32 inch. Don't belt. game it. Don't game it. Whatever size of pants you're wearing, buy that size belt. That's the. From, from what I understand, that's the biggest uh, biggest it issue. It is, guys. Guys, don't uh, listen to us. Um, buy that belt. These belts will adjust outward. They will not adjust much smaller than they are. Um, and, that, and that's the thing. Like, if you wear your sister's jeans, you probably aren't wearing the fucking right size pants anywhere. If you wear skinny jeans, um, another question we get is, well, what size should I buy if I wear a gun in the waist? Well, what size pants do you wear when you wear a gun in the waist? <laughs> like, like, I mean, do you, do you get another size, a bigger size pants? Buy that size. Um, if anything, and you're, and you're like a, between 32 and 34, and you wear a 33-inch pants, get a 32. 
if you're going to lose weight and you're like seriously going to lose weight, not like, well, in six months it's going to be January and I might go to the gym and I might lose five pounds and go down a pant size, get a smaller size. If you're seriously going to lose some weight, go one size smaller. They will go out. Um, but, but for 90% of the guys out there, buy the exact same size belt as it says in your jeans. Um, we get guys that, that buy a, a 34 inch belt and they're like, I got this belt and it's not, you know, 34 inches. Well, no shit. It's because it's for a guy that wears 34 inch pants. That doesn't mean the belt is 34 inches. Typically, um, a dude's belt is going to be two to three inches bigger than the size pants he wears. We, I, I do this, man. We make thousands of belts a week. Listen to me. Trust me on this. And if for some reason you get a belt and you second guessed us or it just didn't work for you, you can send it back into us. And for eight bucks, we're gonna we're gonna build a brand new belt. Eight dollars covers the shipping. We're gonna ship that belt back to you, and you're gonna have another belt, another brand new belt, and uh, that's the deal. We get guys. We probably get 15 to 20 belt returns a week. Guys that it, the sizing just didn't work for them. Guys carry fat in different places. We see it a lot when you start going above a 42 inch belt. Um, you know, they're they're just different bodies, and people have different body shapes. So with with that the belts coming back we cut new belts and ship those out and guys say well why don't you just change your sizing here's the thing we ship over 200 boxes a day a solid hundred packages a day go out of here that are belts and we ship a lot of times on Saturday so 600 belts a week going out of here if I get 20 belts back you know every week every other week or so out of 700 belts that's a super low percentage what that tells me is not that our sizing is off it's that you know, 1% of the populace has a weird body shape or wears clothes that don't fit them or whatever the deal is. We'll make it right. It, it, it might take you another week or two. You're going to send the belt back in. But in the end, you're going to have what you need. You're going to have the best product out there at a price point that's, that's even a lot of times lower than guys that are, that are you know, making a similar type belt. And uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to make it right for you. Cool. Anything else about belts? No, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> Your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.